Welcome back, Aces fans. So we're on the transmission segment of this whole thing. I know we've went through a lot of the wiring and how it's laid out, but in this video, we're gonna explain some transmission facts for you. 4L60, 4L65, a little bit on the 4L70, it's all the same really, and the 4L80 transmissions. I did go to the local yard and get us a couple of greasy examples, but we'll go over those here ever so shortly. The, um, the 4L60 is one of the most common swap things you're going to run into when doing LS swaps. A lot of people want an 80. That's my personal favorite. They hold some power. But the 4L60, 4-speed, four longitudinally oriented, 6,000 gross vehicle weight, kind of like, you know, the torque range of your vehicle, and evolution, which some people say is electronic, but it's electronic evolution of the 700R4 transmission. So GM back in the early 90s started calling, calling it in this kind of situation. So you have three or four or five or L or T or I think CBT maybe, I don't know, 60s, 50s, 80s, so on and so forth, and then just E. Now on the 4L60E, you're going to have, um, if you're a junkyard hunter like myself and you're looking to build a, a transmission for your project, you're going to be looking at the RPO codes on the side of the transmission case. 4L60, good unit, good for about 380 on the torque. It says M30 on the side of the transmission case, which I'll show it to you. It's not on every case, but it's on a lot of them. If it's a 65, which is a bit heavier duty, um, it's going to say M32 on the side. So 4L60, M30 has a four pinion planetary, which is kind of a torque limiter in the whole thing because those little planetary gear sets in there you know, the more the merrier when it comes to that. You can get some really nice spicy aftermarket ones as well, but they cost the money. So if you're really building the transmission, you can go salvage yard like I like to do and freshen it up, or you can go severely built and spend $6,000 on a very, very, very healthy transmission. But hopefully, if with the right combination of parts, you can put together a pretty good one for your project. So anyways, with this, let me roll the transmission into view here just shortly and I'll show you the RPO code and kind of how this thing looks. All right, so here's our transmission. This is, this is a straight up salvage yard finder. I didn't do a lot of research into this particular one other than a few numbers. Um, on the side of it right here, it's an M30. So it is a 4L60. It's missing the seventh bolt at the top, which indicates it probably come off of a pre-1997 or pre-LS uh, application. So it's got the six bolts. So it come off of a 350 or, or 5.7 liter or a 4.3. If you read this tag right here, this 7SHD, and you look it up, it comes back to a 1997 two-wheel drive S10, basically, with a 4.3 liter engine in it, which makes a lot of sense really looking at the fact this is a, a light-duty truck transmission or some cars, depending on what you got going on, but it's two-wheel drive Probably would have went in an S10. The bell housing bolts are a little bit funny. This is going to be a 97 model. And 96, they started the split bell housing, so we know it's at least slightly more modern with a few more updates internally, like GM fixes, as I call them. So it's it's uh, it's a little greasy all the way around the block, but we do have a 4L60. It come off a 4.3, and if I took the torque converter out, which I'm not going to do because we are in a garage here, there's no 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 need to clean that mess up, but it's going to have a 298 millimeter input turbine shaft, which is going to be like a little bit funny with a smaller O-ring instead of the cut end with the larger O-ring on it. So that's probably what we're dealing with up there. I still got to tear it apart and do a bunch of other stuff, but we're not going to do that in this video series at least. So let me turn this thing around and I'll show you how we're going to wire our harness up on this and a couple other variations because I did bring the four wheel drive adapter with me. So I'll show you that thing. All right, so we got the transmission flipped around. It's um, it's greasy. It's a little dirty, and I like it. It's it's fantastic. But I did bring you our updated harness, or what we have in our kits now. See, it's uh, that one. We got the transmission body connector itself. This goes into the transmission. I'll show where that connects. We got the vehicle speed sensor, which is literally vehicle speed. Turbine input speed sensor. This would be for your 4L80 applications. And then we got the actual main connector to the harness right here. Um, this is updated. It's a lot better than the first one. It's, it's, uh, it's way easier to install and it's way easier to hide 
so you're not dealing with a massive connector trying to put it somewhere between your your body and your bell housing so let's just uh i'll just lay this out here and we'll plug it in and i'll kind of show you the what's what on it here so on the transmission you gotta you gotta be mindful of you know where you're going to install stuff at because this right here you know it is keyed so it only goes in one spot and if you search around a little bit you can find that so not a biggie there it's going to be on the outside just a little click if you want to remove it you just squeeze the sides and give it a yank no big deal the vehicle speed sensor it's going to go right back here like so this is an early one i'm very happy it's the same connector so this is like probably right at the year where they changed the style vehicle speed sensor so this is the output shaft that hooks to your drive line back here this is telling the the ecu how fast the shaft is spinning which is how fast your wheels are spinning and it's just a bit of a math calculation there's 40 teeth on the input on the inside of this housing right here on a, a shaft the output shaft now doubt because of the application of this transmission that this thing has a hardened output shaft but it's fine for a swap project the rest of it you just got to figure out the best path and you know on the the blazer that we did the transmission harness kind of came out right here so if you actually have a, the connector that's not missing right here whenever you attach that and you get this up here there's a lot of times there's a wiring connector you can kind of piggyback into and then you got the vent tube right here so it just makes everything flow real nice nothing's bound up too much nothing's weird the only thing you got to deal with is this which i usually just kind of do this number right here with or or put it up this direction but you know it flows it flows good here and you can keep it all real tidy so kind of like that that's generally how, like how how i like to lay it out because the tr the exhaust systems on ours is like right here so you can't even shoot it with a camera underneath and to put it in there you're kind of using your fingertips over the exhaust just trying to barely get it in or trying to come up through the back and guessing at what you're touching so it gets a little nightmare sometimes so one of the things that some of our customers deal with is when they have a four-wheel drive application. So if you can imagine, this tail housing right here is removed. You've already took your transmission apart and changed out your output shaft, which on a four-wheel drive is a little bit shorter. On two-wheel drive, it's a little bit longer. It's the long, long shaft, short housing type situation there. So if we was to go to four-wheel drive with it, we'd have to take the case apart a little bit, change out the output shaft, put this adapter on there, and then there'll be a transfer case back here. Now, the thing is, where this is about right there, and this is only this long, the, the output shaft, the speed sensor is going to be way back here on the, on the transfer case. So we're going to have to, you know, a lot of times you can just buy these extension harnesses, uh, for a VSS, it's just a normal thing. I think they're like $6 on the internet. Uh, we may start supplying them eventually or some variation of a modified harness with a lot more uh, VSS length here. But then with more wire length is more cleanup. So we need to kind of find the, the middle ground on that. But yeah, in a four-wheel drive application, this right here will be bolted on the back. The shaft will be shorter and then there'll be a ma massive transfer case back here. So hopefully that uh, kind of clears up how it looks in our blazer right now with i mean it's it's right here just like that this is like that and it lays right up here and you saw in the video it did just lay up there just fine it plugged right in right there in the back of the valley really accessible nothing in the way nothing getting burnt or mangled or twisted so pretty nice clean install not a whole lot to do now another thing before i forget another thing people run into is the uh, park neutral switch on the other side we don't even need that because inside it has logic switches it has a bunch of little pressure switches that as you move the mechanical bits of the valve body around it actually applies pressure in different sections so it'll be like logically one zero one zero or zero zero one one or something like that it'll tell you whether it's in park or drive or neutral or you know reverse or what have you not so that's that's why we don't need it we don't need the extra headache if you want to hook up your neutral safety you can use a bit of your factory wiring harness and kind of loop through that but that's up on you guys to go through your schematic go through all that or what have you not and be like okay this is neutral safety to make sure i'm not starting it in drive 
Um, or you're just like a hot rider like me and just send it. But, you know, I don't recommend that. You need to keep safety in mind. Anywho, now next we're going to talk about the 4L80E transmission. I do have one. It's a little rough, but I need the internal parts for another project. So I'm just going to show it to you before I get the thing. Hang tight. Man, that's heavy. This is a, it's a GM 4L80E. This thing is a for sure a team lift activity. You don't want to strain yourself on it. It took two of us to get it up here. I'm just getting old, I guess. So anyways, the 4L80, uh, this is the one. The, the 400, right back in the day, that was a, that was a 3L80 transmission. This is a 4L80, four speed, longitudinal, 8,000 gross vehicle weight, evolution or electronic evolution transmissions. You can generally find the tag on the side of these things if you want to know what they really are. There's a little green tag on the side. This is a O2 HMP, which I believe is from a 2002 2500 HD with a 6 liter. Probably kind of out of a Silverado or like a work truck or even a, could have come in and a box truck or maybe even a UPS truck. Who knows? Anyways, this one suffered an ill fate. The bell housing's broken right here. It's cracked. It's busted off on the other side. I'll show you guys that when we rotate it around. But like I said, I just need the guts out of it. And it is the one, the right one for me because of the orientation of the, the cooling ports here for the uh, trans fluid. Anyways, let me spin this thing around. It's a little greasy, not a big deal, but I want to show you where the harness lays out on it. So let's just get that rotated. Good thing I brought my cart. So on these are a little bit different because the, connect, the, the case connector is here on the driver's side as well as the vehicle speed sensor and the turbine input speed sensor. And on this, it's going to be a lot of the same thing. You're going to end up with that connector up here and you just kind of work your way down. You want to figure out the, the best route for your wiring. I like to go to the insides of a lot of things like this. This is your turbine connector. There we go. Turbine input, input speed. And then I'll go with the VSS. And then I'll go with the case connector, which is a little bit different because you'd think it goes that way. Now this case connector is pushed out where it's come out of a wrecked truck, but let's see here. It'll go on like that. And then the rest of it is, you know, your normal tabs for getting everything mounted. You want to tuck your wires in and, and lay it out real nice. On our Aces truck, the, the black Silverado, it's, it's laid out a lot like this. All connected down, good, no issues, not on the shafts, not on the exhaust or anything. So, and it still gives you plenty of room to connect your rest of your harness without too much extra wire left over. Now, this is a two-wheel drive application currently in park, so it's not going to roll away, I hope. With this, a lot of times, depending on the application and year range, you end up with different plastic plugs blanking these things out. So this, on a four-wheel drive, will be missing, and then there'll just be a little, a little O-ringed blank plug, no speed sensor. Also, on the output shaft, there'll be no 40-tooth reluctor inside either. There's a whole different shaft, whole different housing. It goes to a transfer case where your speed sensor is going to be way, way back here on the output shaft, right next to the drive line. So most transfer cases have three speed sensors. You're going to have the one that's going to go on the output shaft. So with that, no, our systems don't really control transfer cases. So the electronic transfer cases still needs to be handled by the body of it. And it will make it shift funny if you're doing it. It's, it's kind of complicated, really, but... Yeah, the, it's really designed for two-wheel drive applications. You can make it work in four, but it's, it's a bit of a headache, honestly. You know, it's just because there's so many speed sensors going on with it. It's not a massive deal. Mine does work, but I use the body control to do it, and it's, I don't know, it's just a fine way to hook it up. Well, I'm going to have to find a, a good method of relaying the information and making a video just going over that, but that's a good future video for this LS series when we get into four-wheel drive applications like I will be doing. So... With that, that's how the 80 hooks up. Nice and secured, nothing wild. Um, the next, the very next video on this uh, is gonna be forward setting up the handheld and the differences 
and the, the gearbox is listed and some of the parameters you can adjust. Now, previously in this series, I did adjust a few things, but I want to go over that in more detail when it comes to the tuning side of this stuff. So I'm hoping this is helping out. So keep making the suggestions. We'll keep doing our thing and we're going to make a whole bunch of videos on this. And I'm really looking forward, honestly, to putting the blazer on the dyno and giving it a rip just for you, the people.